So, uh, look at this. You gotta love these news days. New, a since-deleted, shut up, video from 2019 shows Marjorie Taylor Greene harassing AOC's office through a locked door. MTG was an AOC reply gal uh, back before she even got elected, calling her crazy eyes and telling her through the office's mailbox slot to get rid of your diaper while telling the office to open the door and come out. Please look at this. This is an elected official now. You want to talk to Crazy Ocasio? You come to this little thing and you open it up and you whisper confession into her. Confession session. This is confession. <laughs> This is, this is Ocasio confession right there. What's... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'm an American citizen. I pay your salary. Hey, um, I just have a quick question. Real quick question. I don't know if anyone here has an answer. Why do we let people like this get up to the office doors of Congress people? I feel, I feel like the working area for Congress people should be behind, like, several security checkpoints. <laughs> through the taxes that you collect from me through the IRS, uh -huh. because I'm a tax-paying citizen of the United States. I'm a woman, I'm a female okay. business owner, and I'm proud to be an American woman. And okay. I do not support your socialist policies, and I do not support your murderous abortion policies. Okay. As a mother of three children, I'm appalled at New York's law for abortion, and it needs to end, and it needs to stop now. You're bringing God's judgment on our country, and I'm against it as well. This woman now has the same political power as AOC, by the way, at least in terms of her congressional role. Well as my friends. So you need to stop being a baby and stop locking your door and come out and face the American citizens that you serve. What, if you want to be a big girl, you need to get rid of your diaper and come out and be able to talk to the American citizens instead of us having to use a flap, a little flap. But you're like her, the one using the flap. She's like, she keeps flapping her gums. Oh, like, this flappy, is flappy. Okay, look. Uh, this, is, this, is this is like child games. This is, this is child session. Boop, 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 boop. Hello there. Hello. Hashtag, where's AOC? <laughs> I hear you in there. This Siri, wait, are there really not, like, security guards that can, like, walk into the hall and, like, say, fuck off to these? Is this, are you just allowed? Could I go to D.C. and just, like, find a congressman I don't like and just, like, scream into the mailbox? As hard as like the little mail window slot, can I can I just do this? Am I allowed? Can we do it the senators? Where's Matt Gates? Where's Ted Cruz? Where's Madison Cawthorn? Give me. Creepy. It's it's hide and seek. This is, this is, this is, this is huh? Hide and seek. It's hide and seek. Tag, you're it. Guess what? You can't stay in there. For CNN said they had them following around. Okay, if security's here, I don't think they should be allowed. I'm sorry. Pardon me for sounding like an authoritarian anti-democrat here, but I don't think random people should be able to scream at Congress people while they're doing their job through a fucking... I, I know none of these people have guns on them. It's not like this is necessarily a security threat. I just don't think it should be allowed. Forever. Uh, Can you come out and play? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we were... Again what if they have weapons, though? They went through a security checkpoint to get here. They don't have weapons. I guess she got the message before we came here. Because if you want to come uh, to yeah. uh, visit the socialist communist, you're, you're very good artist. I'm, I'm just Holy trying shit! Is that Keem Star? Good artist. I'm, I'm just trying to decorate. You know, this is her book where we sign it. This is her signing book, and I'm just signing it. Should we draw a wall? Should we draw a wall? Yeah, Let's yeah. Draw a wall. Where is it? Is there another pen? We really want to draw a wall, so let's draw what a wall looks like, everybody. This is a wall. Imagine doing this and saying that AOC is the one who looks crazy. They're like children. They're actual children. You guys have to understand, okay, that fascism is like a kind of mental infantilism. If you actually read on how, like, the internal behavior of the Nazi party rang out, these people aren't, like, steely professionals. These people act like kids. I've said this before, but Adolf Hitler actually wanted his contemporaries to refer to him as the wolf, or whatever that is in German, and got insulted when they wouldn't. He would get upset if the media was mean to him, and he would sulk. He would sometimes sleep until noon. The, the, it's, this, it does it to people. It's a mental regression. 
um, that Marjorie Taylor Greene clearly didn't need any help with, considering she wasn't that bright to begin with. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, you know, AOC responded to the uh, publicization of this video. The fact that Kevin McCarthy, the House GOP leader, stripped Justin Amash of all committee seats for criticizing Trump, but has worked to protect this person, MTG, also known as Grinning Titan, from consequences, including pretending he doesn't see it, tells you that what is happening with the support of GOP leadership. And then additional info comes out. Among Green's associates with her is Anthony Aguero, Aguero, who was among the Capitol mob on January 6th who went into the building. So of the two people who went to the door to harass uh, AOC and like yell at her and tell her to put a diaper through, one of them became a congresswoman and the other one uh, was arrested for storming the Capitol building. Can't stay in there forever. Come out and play. Yep. Spectacular stuff. And AOC rightly says, if the shoe were on the other foot, the GOP would be calling for my expulsion. Um, when is this from? I mean, these tweets are from today. Uh, AOC calls her unwell. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Just about the whole situation with uh, Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene, is there any aspect to that? Um, there's obviously more clips that have been uncovered. Yeah, I, it's, it um, seems as though she had been posting some videos. I mean, this is a woman that's deeply unwell um, and clearly needs some help. Uh, I. Hey! You all get mad at me when I describe my debate opponents as crazy. You call me ableist, but when AOC does it, you people are okay with it? Half the people I debate, this is how I feel after I talk with them, you know? Or, like, when I'm talking with them. They're, they're saying shit, and I'm like... Do I respond with a debate point, or do I encourage them to get therapy, or... AOC is repping my tactics here, okay? You don't say unwell. Hey, if AOC wasn't a congresswoman, if AOC was still a bartender, she wouldn't be saying unwell either, okay? She'd be saying fucking crazy ass bitch, all right? But AOC is a congresswoman now, okay? I'm not! Different standards. You know, I, and her kind of fixation has lasted for several years now. Um, you know, it's at this point, I think, the, the, the depth of that unwellness uh, has raised concerns for other members um, as well. And so, you know, I think that this is a, an assessment that needs to be made by the proper profession. She said she wasn't going to stop debating you when asked you yesterday yeah. you were challenging her to debate. Yeah, you know, it's... Um, she does keep discussing this, but it's it's not a thing, you know, and so I'm I'm concerned about her perceptions of reality. Um, so. Just one last quick. Before I was blew up in the hallway previously, did you ever have like a conversation with her previously that was not as well? I mean, a couple of weeks ago, uh, she approached me on on the uh, floor of the house. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, no, this 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 is just kind of come from nowhere. I love that. AOC doesn't even pretend to take MTG seriously. She's just like, I don't know, man. She's kind of crazy, you know? She's like, she's like obsessed with me and like, I don't know. I don't want to... <laughs> I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene has an advanced case of AOCDS. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Concerned with her perception of reality, see that's less bad, Vosh? I'm not a congresswoman! Jesus. Um... Is she ever going to be expelled from Congress? Why would she be? Marjorie Taylor... I, I hate to say it, guys. Marjorie Taylor Greene only acts crazier than the rest of the Republican Party. She's not any crazier in terms of the actual position she holds. Look at Trump. Jesus. Do you see Trump's presidency? It's ridiculous. He's a clown. I know, I know this is like a talked out point when you actually look at it, though, like in, in retrospect. Now that we have Biden and Biden's, you know, like a old guy, you know, professional kind of dude. And you look back at Trump as... He's a lunatic, but they all supported him. He's from the moment he ran, Donald Trump was clearly not well. Pathological narcissism. I mean, lying about the size of your inauguration crowd. First day you're a president and you publicize and defend a, a factually disprovable lie. You, you could like something that you can actually just immediately and 
evidently disprove. Um, but he did it anyway, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. Didn't matter. Nobody cared. This is what Republicans are, okay? I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'll say it as many times as I need to, okay? Their positions are determined not by logic, but by emotion. Everyone's positions are determined by emotion by a little bit. I'm not saying every Democrat is some hyper-logic lord, but for them, it is a deep-seated, pathological, virulently emotional response to everything. There is no internal engagement whatsoever which explains their behavior. And MTG, I think, is just the logical next step of this point, you know? Um, the Initially, you know, you have a Republican Party that is driven in large part by contempt of minorities. I mean, you say 50, 60 years ago, you, after the party switched, you know, the Southern strategy, you have them driven in an almost logical way. Not that hatred for minorities is... Uh, logical, but the way in which they enact their positions feels like it follows a cohesive thread. But it's fallen apart with time. And you can only sell insane conspiracy theories to old boomers for so long before eventually they start voting off those crazy conspiracy theories. See, that's the problem with a democracy. In an autocracy, you can say whatever crazy shit you want to the population, they don't vote new people in, you're in charge, you can maintain control. But in democracy, you feed the population crazy bullshit, eventually they're going to start voting in crazy people reflective of the shit that you've given them. That's why democracy and republicanism don't go hand in hand, uh, actually. They don't work very well. So, the crazy is here to stay. I'm just hoping, and this is what I really, really hope, I mean, I think about this often, I really hope that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene are evidently unwell enough to push people who were previously in the Republican Party more towards being an independent. Clarify you're not for autocracy, Lamal. I'll keep it ambiguous so that the absolute degenerate brainlets who can't figure it out immediately by the tone of my voice, uh, you know, have something to play with, you know, the, the way that a cat would sort of bat at a stupid jingly toy. That's you. That's your confusion in this moment. I hope you have fun with it for years. Um, the, um, the, the hope is that people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Trump and what have you push these more moderate Republicans to the center. I just don't know how much that's going to happen, really. It's about 40% of the Republican Party thinks the election was stolen. What is it, 40, 50? What's the... There is a group of people in the Republican Party who could potentially be swayed by sufficiently abhorrent behavior on the part of the Republican Party. You know. Well. Oh, a, a final follow-up to that, by the way. An interesting study came out. Somebody emailed this to me. It came out uh, last month, so it's not new, new. But a new study draws a line from January 6th to Charlottesville. It's a study, uh, sort of a meta-analysis of previous pieces of information about the nature of the January 6th Capitol riot, which talks about the demographics of the people involved. There are some really interesting points in here that I want to go over, okay? Robert Pape, Pape? is a political scientist at the University of Chicago who specializes in the study of various security threats. He did a research bit in uh, Washington Post, published a column on this. The Chicago Project on Security and Threats, or CPOST, working with court records, has analyzed the demographics and home county characteristics of the 377 Americans from 250 counties in 44 states arrested or charged in the Capitol attack. Those involved are, by and large, older and more professional than right-wing protesters we have surveyed in the past. They typically have no ties to existing right-wing groups. But like earlier protesters, they're 95% white, shocker, and 85% male, and many live near and among Biden supporters in blue and purple counties. Nor were these insurrectionists typically from deep red counties. Some 52% are from blue counties that Biden comfortably won. But by far the most interesting characteristic common to the insurrectionist background has to do with changes in their local demographics. Counties with the most significant declines in the non-Hispanic white population are the most likely to produce insurrectionists who now face charges. CPOST also conducted two independent studies in February and March, including a National Opinion Research Council survey to help understand the roots of this rage. One driver overwhelmingly stood out. 
Fear of the Great Replacement. Great Replacement Theory has achieved iconic status with white nationalists and holds that minorities are progressively replacing white populations due to mass immigration policies and low birth rates. Extensive social media exposure is the second biggest driver of this view, our surveys found. Replacement theory might help explain why a high percentage of the rioters hailed from counties with fast-rising non-white populations. So, what makes this interesting to me, this actually completely disproves the bullshit people were saying about the Capital Six, uh, the January 6 Capitol riots being some sort of working-class populist thing of people rising up against their government. The primary motivator here had nothing to do with working-class antagonism. These demographics were disproportionately older, wealthier, more professional. It was racism. Racism did it. Now, I knew that because I don't hold on to this delusion that right-wing fascists are actually just working-class heroes. There are people, like Jimmy Dore types, who talked about the Capitol riot like they were, you know, like, no, the, they're just sick of all the corruption in D.C. And yeah, maybe they're wrong about the, 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 you know, the election stuff. And maybe Biden really did win. But you can't ignore their working class animosity. No, 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 no. It was a new Charlottesville. Except instead of it being a combination of existing far-right groups, it was the creation of a new one. People united in a pathological obsession with maintaining conservative control of government so they can keep brown people out of this country. That was the prim primary motivator. It always has been. Building the wall at the southern border. The Muslim ban. Black Lives Matter. Trump's presidency has always been about racial animus. Comparatively, he spoke about like working class issues very, very scarcely. And by the way, if, you're, if you want to be a big working class guy and all you got to talk about is the Rust Belt, you can fuck right off. The most obvious and evident working class demographic are people who live in the inner city who are working minimum wage jobs, often people of color. If you're some working class hero and you're only referring to the working class as the, you know, 65 year old white men in oiler towns, then you're, then you're talking about white people. You're not talking about the working class. Now, those people are part of the working class, sure, but if you're only focusing on them, no. So I just, I like this survey because it makes so obvious what we already knew, which was that there is no ally with the right on this. There isn't some underlying working class animus that we can unite on. Maybe for some of them, maybe for portions, but the types of people who engage in that behavior, no, 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 no. They just want fewer white people in the country pretty much been all the Republican Party's been about for like 50, 60 years. Jesus. Would you please do a Politics 101 on Critical Race Theory, please? I feel like I talk about it so much and it never sticks, really. But Wait, what did I say? Oh, no. Did I say fewer white people when I said fewer non-white people? Uh, Tempest, cut the cut it cut that in a way to make it. No, just include this segment. Just stop here. I meant non-white people. Obviously, I misspeak all the time. Just include it here. Okay, now cut, cut, cut. 